Let's talk about choking and trapping. Trapping is where a color typically is spread a little bit. In fact, in the old camera days, they called it a fatty. So you fatten the color up or fatten an area up. It doesn't mean make it larger overall. It means make the outside edge a little thicker, a little fatter. A choke typically reduces it, also called a skinny. So typically you would choke an underbase, reduce the size a little bit so that the color falls off the underbase, or you would trap the top color so it falls off the underbase. Every design is different, and if you have a, a lot of type and a lot of hard edge graphics, depending on how the artwork is done, you might either choke the underbase or trap the, the, the top color, spread it, or choke the base a little bit and trap the top color on, on and do, do both of those things to the image to make it kind of work. It depends on how thin your type is. If you choke the underbase back, if you choke it back and the type is real thin, then you're going to lose the underbase, and so it's, some, it's kind of a judgment call. It's really hard to choke or trap anything with gradations. When you have a lot of gradations going on, a lot of shading going on, that's almost impossible to choke or trap. But you need to spend some time on this because it's going to make your designs print a lot better. This design is a good example of there's some areas we just can't do much with. We aren't going to do anything with the cars. There's just not much we can do with the cars. The bike is going to be okay because in the, the realities are that the way we're, we're printing this with transparent inks that are off the shelf inks other than the underbase, when the inks fall off the underbase, you don't see them. If you recall from the early, early video on the ink opacities, you saw the sample of how inks look when there's a white underbase and how they look when there's no base. You have to kind of work your way through the design. Now let's just assume that this design is going on a black shirt. If this is going on a black shirt and we're not going to print black as one of our colors, then we need to kind of look and see where is the color going to fall off the base. As an example, this design, if we look really closely, it hasn't got a really clean edge to it. To print this good at press, I would want to spread the yellow slightly because we're looking at black shirt here. I don't think we're looking at the black plate. No, the black plate's off. Looking at black shirt here, and I want to spread the yellow so it falls off of the base onto the shirt. And if I add a slight stroke to the yellow, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to click on the yellow channel all by itself. So there's our yellow channel. And now there's a lot going on for the yellow, so we're going to zoom back out a little bit. We don't want to do... I don't think much choking. Let's just see if we're going to spread any of the yellow back here. I'm not going to spread the yellows back here because I don't want them to be touching the red or overlapping the red and giving us that kind of a weird area. We aren't going to be spreading this yellow. We're not going to be spreading this yellow. The car we're not going to worry about. Uh, the Phoenix we're not going to worry about. So all we're going to do is just do it. worry about it in this area right here. We're going to click on the magic wand tool. We're going to click, hold on the shift key and click, click. There's a variety of ways you can do this, but this is for this particular area because I don't want to select all of the yellow, which would be select similar, or would select every, all the yellow in the design. I want to select just this area. Now we're going to add a stroke to it. Now if you're used to uh, vector graphics, that's typically how you would choke or trap in a vector program is you would add strokes to things. And it's not so hard in Photoshop. Keeping in mind, let's zoom in, that the edge is not real clean here. See the anti-aliasing? So if I put a stroke on this and I stroke it from the outside and I put a stroke on it, that stroke is going to see all that soft edge and it may not give me a real clean uh, enlargement of the edge. I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the edit pull down menu and come down to stroke, now I'm going to stroke based on this image being 300 dpi because we're going to stroke in pixels, not in points. When you're in a vector program, you think in points. One or two point stroke is good. When you're in a pixel program, it all depends on the resolution of the design. So we're going to assume your design is 300 dpi. If I give this a two pixel stroke to the outside at 100%, it's going to stroke it. Now if I take the marching ants off, you can see that it kind of didn't know where to go because it went away from that ratty edge. I'm going to undo this. Let's go back in history. What I like to do is do this. If I go to edit, stroke, if I give it a five pixel stroke from the center, that'll be a two and a half pixel uh, fattening of it because it's going to now stroke both directions like you would in a vector program. And If I say OK, it fattens it slightly, control D, take off the marching ants, but it's actually cleaned up the edge and made it uh, nice and sharp, not ratty like it was. So now, if we look at this on the underbase, we can see where it's falling off here. 
because we've told it that the yellow has a 5% solidity. Now let's just change that number and you're going to see what's going to happen. Remember I said that when you change this number, it, it does not uh, change the steps, it changes how they display. So if I make this 100%, this is not how yellow is going to print on a black shirt. Yellow on a black shirt is going to print like that. The truth of the matter is you're not going to see the yellow. If you, you, know, you, you get in the habit of looking at other people's shirts and you're not going to see where that yellow falls off the white. And so we're going to now be able to print uh, in register and not worry about if we're off register just a hair because we have spread the yellow. Now we could have just as easily choked back the underbase. Let's go back in history. We're going to go back and let's go ahead and on the same image we're going to click on the underbase. So there's the base. And I'm going to click on uh, Magic Wand, and we're going to click, click. I could have left the yellow selected because I picked on all the yellow, and that would have done the same thing. But let's just go ahead and select the base here. Now, same thing applies here. You can see it's kind of a ratty edge. If I go to Edit Stroke, and I give it a, a white stroke, now this may make it too skinny. Sometimes the underbase with the, with the letters kind of go to a little serif. It might make it too thin. You might actually lose the base. But let's see what happens if we give it a white stroke. Make sure that's white. From the center, 5 pixels at 300 dpi is about a 2.5 pixel, it's a two and a half pixel uh, reduction in size, which would be about a point and a half, two points. There we go. Now, when I put the yellow on top of that, the yellow falls off just like before. And don't be put off by the fact you can see the yellow quite a bit here. Photoshop displays that a little brighter than it really is. And so when at, uh, at the actual press, you're never going to see the yellow falling off of it. Now the problem becomes if you're going to be printing on light shirts, dark shirts, a variety of shirt colors. On the black shirt, I showed you how I would either choke back the underbase or spread the top color to fall off the base uh, if you're going to be not printing black. But if you're going to be printing black, let's change the shirt color and I'll show you what I mean. Let's just go to a lighter shirt color, double click on the black ch channel, and let's just click on a lighter shirt color. So now if we're going to be printing black as a color, we want to spread the yellow slightly so it's going to be print better. There's a lot going on here in so many different areas that have shading and gradations and drop shadows that the real problem area will probably be this. Everything else will probably be okay even if we're just a tad off register. But here is where you would want to spread the yellow and not choke back the underbase because we still have the base in place. We're still using the base. If we choke back the base, we're going to see where we've choked it here. Here we're going to spread the yellow so the yellow prints under the black just slightly. So if we're off register a hair, we won't see any of the base or the shirt peeking through. So if you're going to be printing on a variety of shirt colors, typically you will, you will actually spread the color, not choke back the underbase. Now for a design like this, we have to pretty much look at the entire design and kind of analyze where the problems are going to be. We have the red printing next to the white or on top of the white in this case, and we're not going to be spreading the red because we're probably going to be printing a solid base of white. Let's look at the separation for this. We're printing a base of white. On top of that, we're going to be printing the red. So we're not going to be worrying about this red in the word screen print, but I am concerned about the red little swishes down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on the magic wand. I'm on the red channel. I'm going to select just that. I'm going to select with my shift key held down this red and this red and this red. Oops, too much. And now I'm going to give them a slight stroke. You can even almost see in my example here where the white's peeking out around it. I'm going to just spread just those. We're going to go to Edit, Stroke. I'm going to now give it a black stroke to spread these, trap them. Give it five pixels from the center, which again is a two and a half pixel uh, uh, stroke or trap. Say OK. And now, if we zoom in on it, we can now see where it's falling off the shirt. Now, the other area that's a problem would be the yellow type down below. And if I click, take off the marching ants, click on the yellow plate all by itself. I'm not going to worry about the yellow where it's got the, the gradations and shading. I'm not going to worry about that, but I want to spread this. Now there's a couple of ways of, of selecting the color. You saw in the previous example that I picked up Lasso, uh, 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 Magic Wand, and I just clicked, held on the shift key and clicked and clicked. You could do that, but if you have a lot to do, that kind of takes forever. What I typically will do will be click on the very first item I want to select. and go to the select pull down menu and go to similar.
Now, yes, it finds some of this up here, but it all it quickly, just without having you do a shift click, shift click, shift click, it picks these things up. Now, I can now go to the rectangle marquee tool, make sure that it's set to subtract from selection, and just do a real quick boom. It removes that from the selection. So you can click on the area you want with Magic Wand, select it, go to Select Similar, it selects the areas you want. And in the areas you don't want, make sure it's set for Remove from Selection. You can click on Lasso or anything you want, and you can then draw around and remove the selection from those areas. Bottom line is, I've got this area selected, and now again, if I go to Edit, Stroke, from the center, 5 pixels, black stroke, click, you can see the, the actual size of the stroke, take off the marching ants, and this design will now work on a lighter or dark shirt, because on a black shirt where I'm not printing black, the yellow will fall off the underbase white. On a, on a lighter shirt color, it'll actually trap underneath the black outline.